food. America's supply is considered among the safest in the world. Farmers now feed over 300 million Americans daily, and consumers, for the most part, have little to worry about when at the grocery store. But it is the tenacious efforts of regulatory agencies and research scientists that free us from many food safety concerns. Take, for instance, the little-known Aspergillus flavus, commonly called A. flavus. Researcher Gary Payne has studied this fungus for decades. It's a microorganism, often referred to as a mole. And these fungi cannot produce food themselves as a plant can, so they have to grow on either other living organisms or decaying matter. And this is where the problem begins. A. flavus often grows on grain and nut crops during hot, dry conditions. Corn and peanuts are often the target. But so is cottonseed, a common feed for dairy cows. To complicate matters, A. flavus produces a nasty poison called aflatoxin. In high amounts, it can cause death in humans. It is also known to cause liver cancer. Government agencies regularly monitor the grains and nuts for aflatoxin, so the American public is well protected. But finding aflatoxin in commodities can cause severe economic hardship for farmers. It's regulated by the Food and Drug Administration at 20 parts per billion. So if you have corn containing 20 parts per billion, it cannot move in interstate trade. So we're interested in the safety of the product. We want to keep producers in business. Since most corn is grown for export, the producer takes a huge loss. But the toxin also affects those who raise animals. We're concerned more with the long-term effects of aflatoxin contamination. Those are the chronic effects. It causes a reduced weight gain, easy bruising, and also suppression of the immune system. So animals become much more susceptible to other diseases. To help farmers with the aflatoxin problem, Gary received funds from CSR EES to attack the problem on two fronts. We have a small project looking at compounds in corn seeds that inhibit the fungus and inhibit aflatoxin contamination. And we have identified one of those compounds. We're in the process of purifying two additional compounds with the goal of taking those compounds and screening lines of corn for high levels. The other area of my research is looking at conditions that favor aflatoxin production, what genes are expressed and when they're expressed. This involves mapping the genome, all the genetic material of the fungus. For A. flavus, that means nearly 12,000 genes. It's a daunting task. In Gary's work, he's trying to understand the specific role that individual genes, how they interact with one another, what are the controlling points, with the idea that these aflatoxins can lead to prevention strategies that can then be amplified and developed out in controlling aflatoxin production in, in the field. John Groupman is from Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. He believes that Payne's research has global implications. Corn is one of the major export crops that the United States has, so in world trade, the aflatoxin contamination level in corn dictates the price that various buyers around the world will pay for U.S. corn. It has an enormous economic impact. But Gary Payne's work has the potential for far-reaching consequences in human health, too. In developing nations with limited food safety controls, aflatoxin is a big problem. During a 2005 outbreak in Africa, 317 people were poisoned by aflatoxin-infected corn produced in Kenya. 125 died. Payne's goal is to develop corn seed with resistance to the fungus. It is desperately needed in these nations. Some of the regions in East Asia, Southern Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, people can be exposed to up to 50 milligrams of aflatoxin per year, which is an extraordinarily high level. And so I think when we look at the public health equation, the interaction across the planet is such now that we can no longer afford to have areas of the world with tremendously diminished health status because that diminishes everyone.
CSREES funds food safety programs dealing with production, processing, and distribution. The goal is to ensure a wholesome and safe food supply for all Americans.